Hi there, this is going to be a very basic quick start tutorial uh, on the use of Improviser, uh, which is short for Improvisation Advisor. Uh, it's open source software uh, developed and designed by Bob Keller. What Improviser does is it's a tool that's designed to help uh, improvising musicians study chord progressions uh, and construct simple monophonic solos over those chord progressions, um, among a lot more. This program does quite a lot. But what I'm going to do today is just take you through some of the very basics of um, the program, the layer of the program, entering melodies, uh, manipulating those melodies, entering your own chord progressions, and just very simple things like that. So I hope this is helpful to you. Uh, if you want any more information uh, or documentation, that can all be found at www.impro-visor.com. So let's dive straight into it here. Uh, you can see I've got a blank improviser document open. This is a lead sheet. Uh, what a lead sheet consists of is a stave uh, with a single melody line and then you're going to have a series of chord symbols above that. Uh, obviously there's nothing there quite yet because we've not put anything in but we'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, you've also got some very simple controls up here. You can control the tempo, uh, the number of bars in the chorus of the lead sheet uh, per chorus you can control the volume, there's some simple looping controls there, uh, the location of your playback, you've got your play controls here. So by default the stave you've got is a treble stave, you can see we've got a treble clef here. That's very easy to change. If we want to change that we can go into preferences, in the global preferences, and you can see here we've got a choice of stave. We can pick the treble stave, uh, bass stave, grand stave, um, so it's very easy to pick and then you can set that as your your default improviser is going to use when it's going to open just by clicking that checkbox there. Uh, there's a few other things I just want to show you while I'm in this menu here. Uh, improviser has got a lot of built-in styles of music. Um, there are tons here to pick from just depending on what kind of what kind of style of music you're, you're doing. You're, improvis you're improvising too. The default style is swing so we're just going to leave it at that for simplicity. One other thing I want to show you is we can pick what the default instruments are for certain parts of our lead sheet here. We can pick the melody instrument, uh, the instrument that's going to be playing the chords, and a bass line if we have one. For instance, if we want to change this chord instrument, which is by default here, an acoustic grand piano, we can just click on that, and then we get a big selection of instruments we can choose from if we want just a little bit of variety, um, something a bit different than a piano. But we're just going to leave it as a piano for now. So I'm going to back out of here. Uh, regarding key signature and time signature, these can very easily be manipulated either from the preferences, uh, it can be in your lead sheet preferences, see there we've got time signature and key signature, but you can actually change them straight on the lead sheet. So if we click and drag where that key signature is going to be, and drag down, it's going to give us a certain number of flats depending on how much we drag it, and up uh, the same for sharps. So what I'm going to do is actually just leave a B flat in there so we're in the key of F major. Same thing for time signature, if we want to change that we can just click straight on there, drag up and down and it's going to change the time signature we're in. But uh, I'm just going to leave it in 4-4 four, four for now. So uh, let's jump straight into it, let's start drawing our own melody, let's start putting in our own stuff. So there's three main ways you can enter a melody in Improviser. The first being, uh, there's a drawing mode, which we can toggle here by going up to this button that's got a little pencil on it. Clicking on that, it's going to change our cursor to a little pencil. And what we can do is we can draw by clicking and dragging straight onto the stave. And it's going to enter some notes in here, so I'm just going to do this. And it's just going to enter those notes depending on where we put that um, cursor as we're going over the stave. So you can add to notes that way if you want. Uh, I'm just going to undo that by pressing the Z key and taking those notes out again. So we're left with a blank. Yep, blank stave again. So the second way we can enter melody is if I just go back to the normal cursor there. See if we hover over these bars, they're subdivided into little slots. Uh, if we click on the lines of these slots, just depending on where we want a note, that's going to enter notes straight into there. 
So you can enter notes very easily like that if you want to do it that way. I'm just going to take those out again. The third way we can enter notes, uh, we can do it using this textual entry field here. So if we know exactly the notes we want to put in, uh, we can type them straight into here. Uh, the notation for that is very simple, very standard. Uh, so if, if it's a, a flat note, we can do a little B after the note. If it's sharp, we can use a hash. And then we can use plus and minus symbols after the name of the note to denote where that note lies, what, what octave that note lies on relative to the octave of middle C. So if we want to do the C above middle C, for instance, we would do C plus. Or the C that's two octaves above middle C, we'd do C plus uh, plus. Finally, after the name of the note, so let's actually leave that C above middle C there, we can put numbers in. So if we put a four, that's going to mean that's a quarter note. Uh, likewise, eight would be an eighth note, and so on and so forth. We can put values in there, just depending on the duration that we want that note to be. Uh, so I'm just going to put in a series of notes here. So that's a B flat. Let's put an A. Uh, the D above middle C. Let's have a G. Uh, let's have a C that's a quarter note there, uh, an eighth note, and let's finish with a G that's going to last the whole next bar. So all we got to do is we just entered that there, we hit enter, it's going to put those notes straight onto the stave. Very simple, very easy, very precise if you know exactly what you want to put in there. Uh, so I'm just going to take that out, because what we can actually do is we can use the same textual entry field for entering our chord progression. So if we know what chords we want to put in, we can do that straight into there. Let's put some chords in. Uh, if I do a comma, that's going to mean the next chord after that is going to be on the next bar. So let's put another in there. And then we're going to hit enter again. And as you can see, it's just put them straight onto there. Very quick, very easy. So now that we've got that melody entered, there's a bunch of things we can do to it. Uh, very easily manipulate that melody and the notes inside it. So if we've, for instance, made a mistake, uh, say this is not the note, you know, that's not the note I wanted to do, I've made a mistake putting that in, uh, it's very easy to change again. All we have to do is hover over that slot that the note's in and re-click on the stave so we can change about where that note is. It's just going to overwrite the original note. If I just undo that very quickly again, Alternatively, we can click on that note and drag it up and down um, if we just want to drag it to where we want it to be. Let's just undo it. Uh, selecting a slot on its own um, without changing a note is one of the most important things you can learn to do uh, for this basic editing of melodies and improviser. Uh, it's very simple to do once you get the hang of it. If you want to select a note that's outside your current selection, now, our current selection is just this note here. We've not actually selected multiple notes. You would hold down Shift, click on the note you want to select. It's going to make a selection from your initial selection to this new note. Then keep Shift held down and click on the note again. And it's just going to select that slot on its own. So now that we've got that, so that slot selected, say we wanted to put a rest in there. Very easy. All we have to do is just hit the R key when that slot's selected, and that's just going to put a rest in there. Uh, let's just undo that again very quickly. I keep undoing everything I've done. Uh, if we want to, for instance, lengthen the duration of a note, what we can do is we can select the note after the one we want to lengthen. Then with that one selected, if we hit the X key, it's going to remove that note and add its duration onto the previous note. So we've taken that note we had there, put its duration onto that C, and extended the length of the C. Um, so another thing we can do, if we've got a selection of notes, let's just pick that whole group of notes here, and we want to transpose them. Uh, what we can do is we can either click and drag that selection up and down, and it's going to change where they are on the stave. Uh, but there are a couple more specialized ways of uh, transposing notes that we can make use of. One is harmonic transposition. So if we want to change uh, where those notes are on the stave, 
but keep them aligned and conforming to the current chord that's in effect, then what we can do is harmonic transposition. So for harmonic transposition, we use the W key on a selection of notes to go up, and we use the S key to go back down again. Very simple to do. Another type of transposition we can do is called uniform transposition. So if we want to take a selection of notes, put them up or down um, simply by semitones, let's go a semitone at a time, then you can use uniform transposition. So you would hit the E key to transpose those notes up by a semitone, and D to transpose them down by that semitone. Uh, and finally, if you want to transpose by octave, uh, it's very easy to do as well. You just hit the T key to transpose those notes up an octave, and G to transpose them back down. So I hit G there. So that's just some of the very basic stuff you can do uh, with your melody line after you've put it in to manipulate it to get it to really conform to what you want. Uh, if you want to change something after you've put it in, you think, oh no, I don't want that. You know, it's very easy to go back and change. It's no problem at all. Uh, and finally, the last little thing that I just want to show you is uh, the cut, copy, and paste tools. It's very simple. It works how you would expect it to, uh, as it does in any other program. If you've got a selection of notes, let's just keep this selection here, and you want to cut them out and uh, put them somewhere else on the, on the stave. Let's say we want to put them in bar 3 here. Then we have the selection, and then we can use the cut button up here. We've got cut, copy, and paste. Uh, you can also use the X, C, and uh, V key on the, key on the keyboard. Well, we're just going to use the buttons for simplicity. So we have that selection here. Click the cut. It's going to take those notes out and uh, extend the duration of that note before them um, so that you know we've not got a gap, really. It's just going to extend that note before. Then we're going to select the first slot of the third bar by shift-clicking twice on it. Then we can go and hit the paste button, and it's going to put that melody right in there. Uh, and actually, finally, very finally, the play controls, they work as just as you'd expect them to. You can play, pause, stop, uh, record from a MIDI device. Uh, you can use those buttons, or you can use the I key to play and the K key to stop. So very simple stuff. So that's just a very basic overview of entering melody and chords uh, into improviser and just a few things which you can do with them if you just want to edit them about a bit. So I hope that's been helpful to you. Um, do check out the information and full documentation of the program at www.improviser.com, yeah, impro-visor.com I should say, and I uh, hope you have fun with the program. So thanks for watching.